Welcome back to the Fire Emblem Fates Conquest blind run. Last time, we witnessed a singer who could manipulate water with long flowing blue hair sing for Garen and make him groan in even more increasing discomforts. But we couldn't quite put our finger on who that reminds us of because we lacked the common sense. This time though, we actually aren't going to be continuing the main story just yet. Because... Remember how I said that I was going to save unlocking female Kamui's S support until I'd done that for male Kamui? I have now done that. So, female Kamui doesn't need to wait any longer. There are actually quite a few other supports we've got too. Oh, uh, Elise and Arthur have their S, but I might wait a little bit until I do that. Because yeah, I don't want any other S supports to steal our thunder here. Oh. Let's talk to everyone first. Felicia's plate! Yeah, how unfortunate for Felicia, who's not here. Whoa there! Sapphires. Uh. Oh. Niles is manning the dairy. Yeah, that's all I'll say about that. Huh? That's interesting. Oh, that's cool. I think these two have a support. That'd be really interesting. The two psycho girl characters. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I get the feeling Charlotte does too, actually. And apart from that, oh, we got some more Dragon's Vein points from our castle visits. And Jacob. Hey. Well, I can see Felicia is the kind of person who drop plates everywhere, so yeah. Oh, and I haven't talked to you. <gasps> For crying out loud. Norian Blade. Interesting, I'll need to check that out. Um... Hmm, and you're you're talking to someone who's totally not your friend from another world. Pink beret, no. Uh. What about ninja mask? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Though I doubt their relationship is getting any higher. Let's check out the lottery shop. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, Mazu is amazing. Um, no, Ruby. That's definitely not a small prize. Time. <laughs> Expected her to say big bro there. And I'll check the mess hall before the arena. Oh, Perry's outside, so she can't be on duty here. I've heard she's a ridiculous... Oh, no! So, I think Keaton is one of the absolute worst cooks in the entire game. Nope, sorry, getting out of here. <laughs> I mean, considering that he's a werewolf, I mean, you think they wouldn't really, you know, know much about cooking their food at all, but yeah. I've heard he's like one of the absolute worst people to have on mess hall duty, so... Have no fear. Oh, gosh. No, well, Charlotte does. Once again, Benny and Charlotte in the arena, let's see. Ah, uh, Mozu gave me that. I don't want to wager that so early. Let's try uh, Onyx. And let's see how Charlotte does in the lead. Oh, oh, great. That's bad. Mercenary. Uh, we may fail miserably here. Charlotte, better hope your high HP holds. Nope. Uh, this is not looking good. Well, at least she's dodging that Knight's Blows. And she hit! Nice one! Did I do that? <laughs> I really like Charlotte's voice. I think it suits her quite well. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think Kamui knows your true nature by now. It's fine. And now... Okay, before we do supports, let's see. We can build a Camilla statue. Okay. Let's put it with the other statues, which are down there. Okay. And we have three Dragon's Vein points. Okay, let's see what we can upgrade. Oh, we can upgrade our Kamui statue to level two. Although that requires three Dragon's Vein points. So, yeah. Also, boosting the cap on stats, that's not going to be relevant until way later in the game. Upgrading the prison might be helpful, though, considering this next chapter, so I'm actually going to do that. There may be some people to capture there. 
can also upgrade the... Alright, now, I'm actually going to do this because I've heard that you need to upgrade the Fire Orb to... Well, not heard, but... The one thing that I intentionally spoiled myself on about recruitment, in order to get a certain character, you need a level 3 Fire Orb. So I had to upgrade that to level 2 now. And I'll need to save my Dragon's Vein points so I can actually get it to level 3 later. For now, though, I'm holding off on that one. We have... Okay, that's going to be good. Baruka and Leo. And, okay, yeah, let's go ahead and do these. So, this is a pairing that I actually intend to do, which by process of elimination, everyone should now know who I intend to pair Effie with. I've heard that this is one of Leo's nicest pairings. Though he has quite a few, apparently his pairing with Felicia is good too. And yeah, Baruka, I am still disappointed in you after what you did last chapter, but now that I think about it, her doing that was perfectly in character, because I imagine Kamui saying, I need him alive, and then Baruka doing that, and then saying, oh I'm sorry, that does not compute. I have been trained to kill. I know not the meaning of take them alive. Yeah, who was it that trained her? Another assassin. But the Noru doesn't have assassins. Huh. Yeah, they... M I mean, if you're an assassin, you probably don't give out your name to random, uh, random people, even if you are training them. Yeah. What?! You suddenly turn into Carl? Ah. Uh, wow. It's like... Side, this is like reminds me of RPG side quests. It's like, oh, oh look, side quests. Kill this person. Okay, I'll do that for some free money and experience. Oh wait, it's my old teacher. I don't care. Interesting, yeah. Very short support, though. Speaking of interesting, this proves to be pretty hilarious. <laughs> so, Sundere Werewolf and Sundere Mercenary. Well, he is a wolf, that makes sense. <laughs> Ooh, big words. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't think you want to challenge a werewolf to a hunting contest. I think they're going to win easily. Interesting. As long as it doesn't involve telling everyone that I'm severe. I, I, I mean, um, 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 uh, I wasn't saying anything. <laughs> oh. And so they go off to have their hunting contest. And the loser must pay the penalty. Oh, uh, Kaze and Kamui just got to a C. I wonder if this is identical to their C on the other route. I think this is pretty much the same. Yeah, once again, Kaze is a giant chick magnet. And saying he's not a good man. Yeah, that's the same. So I'll skip over that. But now... It is finally time. Time for... Female Kamui. To get her husband off. And for Odin Dark. To continue his bloodline of amazingness. And have it cross over with the bloodline of dragons. And this is going to be so awesome. Let's do this. Only one S rank. Let's go. <laughs> Already a good start. Oh, unfortunately this time he's not going to say my sword hand twitches or can't control while he's proposing to someone. <laughs> yeah, he does that. <laughs> so, in both of these estimates I've done, the male kind of sucks at proposing.
not related by blood, huh? Oh, certain things in this game would beg to differ. Yeah, yeah, she knows what marriage is. Oh, uh, I think it matters a lot. Uh, Odin, get to the point. <laughs> yeah, you need to do things in a... You say things in a very roundabout way, let's just say. <laughs> oh, wow. Exactly. No, that's that's more the case with uh, the other root Kamui's marriage. Is it? Maybe it has some connection to his mother from another world. Well, at least he's being honest. Uh, is it about how... Yeah, so this is actually another reason why I chose one of these as my Kamui's S support for the other route, because uh, there's a lot of interesting implications for if they marry one of the three. The three who, yeah, whose real names must not be spoken of. One day, one day, Odin may have to return to his home to face down his greatest foe. It's going to be a bit hard to explain. <laughs> oh, she's actually accepting his quirks. That's great. And is this going to be amazing? I'm sure this is going to be hilarious. The stars shall go dark before my devotion to you fades. Uh, I mean... I love you. Oh, that's actually really nice. Oh, and we get this. Since I haven't explained this in this version, I may as well say it. So, the excuse for... Yeah, the children existing in this game is... Uh, I know they couldn't do the time travel thing twice in a row, but really, the way they did it here is just... It adds a whole ton of issues. So basically... The people actually have the children during the main game, which has certain disturbing implications for the younger looking characters. But they have to basically put the babies in the hyperbolic baby chamber. And because of that, time passes more quickly, and the babies instantly go to adulthood, so they can take them out and have them fight on the front lines, when they've never had to really know their parents. There are just a whole lot of reasons why this is kind of disturbing, but at the very least, we get paralogs out of it, and, uh... Oh boy! Some awesome characters are going to come out of this union. However, now that we have a husband, oh, who is right there, by the way... You know, now that I think about it, I never actually invited him into the my room. <laughs> and yes, this is going to be amazing. Okay, do we actually get... We don't get to touch his face until later, yeah. Your bond has deepened. One heart out of a lot. And he says something else. He? is a bonfire that lights the very night. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be very good. Though I've heard that one of the things that he can say if you're married to him in this room is very interesting. Alternatively, we can in- Oh! Now that's interesting! So... Now that, you know, now that you're- Also, I notice he has the ninja mask, which is awesome. So now that, you know, Kamui's actually married him, perhaps we can invite one of Odin's friends over and maybe share a few things confidentially. Because I think there Thanks are- a for having me over. 
Uh, not while while uh, she's married now, Laszlo. It's been great spending this one-on-one -on -one time with you. Please invite me over more often. I mean, if you want to. That was a long line. Also, hi there, Liam O'Brien. So yeah, I think, yeah, these two need to talk with Kamui about some stuff, because, uh, yeah. She may have to make a painful decision in the future, yet another one. But let's focus on the painful decisions of the present for the time being. You may rely on me. It's time to head out to our next battlefield. And in fact, because we... Oh, by the way, yeah, spoilers. So, yeah, the next chapter of Noor is set somewhere outside of the main map. But anyway, so is Paralogue 2, which is set in a town in the Deep Realm. But because this is female Kamui who got married to someone, we unlock two Paralogues for the price of one. Ultimate power! Odin's daughter Ophelia. I know she is going to be amazing. But for now... Oh, it's in an ancient city too. That's really cool. For now though, I want to recruit the first child of Kamui first. Then I'll, I'll go for Ophelia because yeah. So yeah, time to head out to Paralogue 2, Dragonblood. Now I should warn you, I already played this paralogue in the other file, on the Hoshido route. So I'm going to record this because, technically speaking, Kana is going to be a bit of a different character with female Kamui, so I want to see that. But this is the only paralogue that I'm going to be recording for both routes. Any other time that I do a paralogue that I already did on another route, I'm going to do it off camera, just like I did with Mozu. But this one, I will show with both. So let's proceed to the town of the Deep Realm. Now, I know this chapter from my other playthrough, and oh boy, it's really frustrating. Not early on. <sighs> Interesting, and you are less blonde than I thought you'd be. Oh no, wait, you inherit the hair from the mother, don't you? Yeah, so you get, um, yeah, so you just look like relatively normal canon, um, hair color, kinda. So, you haven't seen your mom in such a long time. Though, I mean, for her, it's been like five minutes. For you, it's been like, you know, 14-ish years, maybe? Fish for fish? And I guess we can have both now that... Well, actually, we haven't got an upgraded metal on this file. So! Kana, Scion of Scion of Legend, was having a nice peaceful time in the Deep Realms. But then everything changed when the forces of the Invisible Swordsman huh? attacked. The Invisible Swordsman has come to get revenge! He sent his minions to attack the Face Smasher's child! As revenge for them smashing his face all that time ago. Yeah, you wait till his mama gets here, she's gonna totally destroy you. Hey, don't you attack baby face toucher! But thankfully, his mother is here. Oh. I'm so sorry. Yeah, we didn't think the invisible swordsman would send his army to attack here. Yeah. Thankfully, he's okay. <sighs> I mean, you know, he's got the blood of several legendary heroes in his veins. I'm sure he'll be fine. Your mama and her army. <laughs> and this line, which I actually had heard of. Didn't even need dragon form for that one. I'll protect you. That's kind of interesting, because I just realized that male Kamui went into dragon form in this scene, and female hasn't. Unless it's like, uh, they use whatever their higher stat is, so because her strength stat is higher, she actually just uses her sword. <laughs> Prepare to go to invisible oh. hell. Uh oh. Careful there, Kana. No. I think he may have this. Uh oh. Now, now, Kana, your mother has a certain kind of blood that she passed on to you, 
And this blood occasionally makes you hear these little voices in your head that tell you to smash people's faces. So be careful, because if you get really angry, you might... Baby face touch a smash face! Do that! Yep, he's lost it. He's only a quarter dragon, possibly more, depending on who Odin's parents were in the game that he totally wasn't in before. And he's already gone completely nuts. Ah, we remember Kamui's first time transforming. Dying there gave the game over. So, our mission here is to defend... Uh, Kana, who is a feral dragon and already has capped skill and luck, but less luck than on the other file because that uh, um, his father there, her father there, because it was a female Kana, had a luck asset. But this one, mothered by a strength asset. Baby face toucher, not control. Baby face toucher, must smash face. And he's inherited... Oh, okay. Let me just see what skills that I... Where's Odin? Uh, maybe I should have passed down Heartseeker. Wait a minute, though. Plus two damage when hit by a magical attack. Does that count Dragonstones? Because they're technically magic? That may actually help. Doesn't really matter. I mean, you know, if I had held off, I could have passed down better skills. But I wanted to recruit them as quickly as I could. Unfortunately, Kana is totally victim of NPC-itis in this entire chapter. So, no experience for them. Okay, and from the looks of it, none of the enemies here have skills. They're all virtually identical to... So yeah, this paralogue is totally identical to how it was before. But we have a ton of invisible Falcon Knights and Pegasus Knights. Invisible Archers. Hilariously, this boss guy here is weaker than a generic invisible sword master. I guess because generic enemies get the hard mode bonuses and bosses have more fixed stats. We also have a spear master, we've never seen those before. At least here. They have very silly looking hats. And over here we have a bunch of archers. But let's see how differently we do this mission works, considering that we have a totally different party here. So, this chapter is very experience-rich, mostly because there are a ton of reinforcements who spawn later, and they're quite annoying. And so I want to bring some people who may be a little weaker. So, Baruch is coming. I'm actually going to think... I've, I, I need Niles here, because for something that happens later in the chapter, yeah, I'm going to need him. But should I really bring Camilla or not? Hmm. I'll have to see. I might want to not bring those two. I want Kaze and Azura to get a little bit more experience up. As for Baruka. Okay, now Mozu sat out of the last chapter. I might want to use her. But thing is, I think now is a perfect time for Benny and Charlotte to get some action. Especially Charlotte, because she needs to get caught up on levels. Not only that, but I want to unlock their S support as fast as I can, because I've heard that Benny's child paralogue is an utter nightmare if you do it later in the game. So, I want to get to it as quickly as possible. As for everyone else, though, oh, Effie's a little behind. It'd be a shame not to bring Odin to this chapter, though. Do I need Laszlo and Perry? Technically speaking, not really. Uh, question is, how many healers do I have here? I have no healers, that's not good. Mozo and Jacob might be good to bring just for the healing. Uh, yeah, Selena and Keaton are already fine in levels. At this point, you're kind of supposed to be around level 15-ish, so... I think this is probably good. Now... Let's set things up. We've got some archers here. That sounds like a job for... And I need to swap your... You are all quite powerful, though. I think I'll keep Effie there. For now, I'll keep 
Niles down here so that I can snipe those Pegasi when they get near us. Oh, you have a Seraph robe that you can't... Yeah, let's just convoy that. And you'll be down there for the Pegasi as well. Also for the Lance users. Now, where is... Hmm. Uh, those are mages. Kazet does well against mages. Okay, so Charlotte's more like your typical fighter with weak defense. Benny, on the other hand, has ridiculous defense. I think this is an okay setup, actually. Right, so, let's go!